Hey guys, Sam from West Metal Rabbits here. Today I want to talk about a somewhat controversial topic specifically related to meat and the environment. Uh, don't mind my dog, she'll be coming in and out. And I think this is an important topic for people involved with meat rabbits to understand because you're going to get a lot of pushback uh, depending on where you are and especially if you choose to you know, broadcast yourself online. So right now in the kind of broader culture in the West, in America in general, there's sort of this anti-meat movement going on. And I think a lot of this was triggered by sort of the revelations about factory farming and what that looks like for both animal welfare and the environment. And I imagine a lot of you guys are probably pretty sympathetic to that argument. I know that's why I got into producing my own meat. There's, um, there's three reasons why I find most people get into producing their own meat. Concerns about supply and the reliability of the food system, which we saw during the pandemic and now the war in Ukraine. Concerns over the quality of the food system and the fact that industrial produced meat is uh, you know definitely at the very least nutritionally inferior if not pretty bad especially when it comes to poultry as far as additives antibiotics and all kinds of other crap and then concerns about animal welfare and the environment i mean the reality is it's not a pleasant place uh, a factory farm for an animal to be and it is also not particularly environmentally sustainable but those concerns have basically led to two different reactions among people. Some people saying, hey, look, you know, this system is obviously not ideal. We're going to take matters into our own hands, start producing our own meat, do agriculture at a small scale, or not even a small scale, but a more uh, environmentally friendly way. And while that will decrease meat supply a little bit, and it will definitely increase price, you're also getting a whole host of other benefits and a much more sustainable system. And then there's been this sort of extreme other reaction that's come about, and I think it's built up a lot of momentum over recent years, is that, you know, meat is somehow bad, it's unethical, it's bad for you, it's bad for the environment, and it's just something that we need to put behind us as a civilization. And fundamentally, this is it's bullshit, really. I mean, there's a difference between saying, you know, a system is not ideal, we need to fix it, to saying the whole thing is just totally bunk and it comes from a you know a certain mindset and view of the world and I hate to harp on animal rights activists but you know that's really where it does come from the big difference between say somebody who cares about animal welfare and an animal rights activist is how they view the animal and its place in the world and our place in the world you know most of us who raise our own meat rabbits or farmers, we care about our animal welfare. We spend a lot of time working with these animals. We want them to have the best lives possible, but we also acknowledge that they have a purpose, and that purpose is to provide food for us. And this is not a particularly radical thing. If these rabbits were in the wild, they'd have a one to two year life expectancy at most, and they'd be providing food for some other carnivorous animal, or dying from disease and providing food for scavengers and whatnot. You know, we're not raising apex predators here. Nobody's saying we should eat chimpanzees, our closest relative. Most farm animals are pretty low on the food chain, and either they're going to be providing meat for humans in captivity or providing meat for other animals in the wild. It makes very little difference. Now, an animal rights activist somehow conflates the idea that, you know, animals have this innate right to exist, not only exist, but exist in this weird kind of animal utopia. I mean, I never really understood it. It's like, animals should be free from suffering. No living being on this planet is free from suffering. And, you know, if you're doing a humane operation, your animals aren't going to suffer. They're going to live a good life and then they're going to, you know, you know, be slaughtered basically very quickly, very painlessly, and then, you know, go on to serve a greater purpose. So that kind of meant those, those, those groups of people have always existed out there with PETA and all that crap. But they've sort of seized on our growing environmental consciousness and our issues with the industrial food system to kind of peddle a lot of misinformation. The biggest one I want to focus on today is the, is the fact that meat is somehow bad for the environment intrinsically. And this just, from any kind of logical perspective, doesn't make any sense. And there's a ton of great videos out there talking about the various ways in which this is bullcrap you know, besides common sense, and I can link to those down below in the description. I recommend you check them out. But I want to look at it today more from a, a, a farmer breeder kind of perspective, you know, and basically break it down that way. So one of the things that really bothers me in uh, contemporary discourse is we tend to think that our ancestors were idiots and, you know, somehow didn't understand a lot of the things that we think we understand today. And one of the biggest myths around that is that somehow meat is unnecessary and it's a waste of resources and it's a luxury item and this is just simply not true if you were at the dawn of agriculture 
it would make no sense to raise food crops that are consumable by humans, have a net calorie loss by feeding those to animals, and then eating the animals. So basically you're saying that these early agricultural societies, when our main agricultural animals were domesticated, had such a surplus of calories that they were totally fine wasting those to feed an animal just because they like the taste of meat. That doesn't make any sense. Now, as all of you know, basically most of the energy on the earth comes from the sun, and that energy is converted into usable energy by biological life by plants. Now, the problem with plants is they are actually really not that digestible to humans and animals alike. We have to figure out a way to digest them. And in the Fertile Crescent, where agriculture first started, there were several species of animals that were really efficient at turning non-digestible plant matter that was common in the area, aka grass, into highly nutritious food that gave them a massive survival advantage. So that's why the ruminants, which were the first animals to be domesticated, were domesticated. If you look at all the most common ruminants, mainly sheep, goats, cows, and horses, they take grass, which was abundant in that area, and they convert it into useful products. Now, another myth you hear all the time is like somehow, oh, you know, we can just, you know, grow plants everywhere and stuff. Most of the world is not suitable for in high intensity agriculture that would produce vegetables and grains. Grass, scrubland, that is a huge percentage of the land on earth. And it was a huge percentage back then when our ancestors were domesticating these animals. They basically innovated and said, hey, we're already growing food here, but how do we take advantage of this other resource that we currently can't use? And they domesticated animals for that. And so there is no way when an animal is raised in its natural setting, eating what it was supposed to eat and what it was domesticated to eat, that you're having a net loss of calories and somehow saying, oh, you know, where the meat is taking away from human consumable food. Now, yes, feeding cows corn doesn't make a whole lot of sense from, a, uh, from an ancestral perspective, but it does for a profit perspective. Of course, we don't have to do that. That's what this whole movement is about, you know, more uh, natural and healthy meat, is about getting, kind of getting back to what that original purpose was. So, yes, will it decrease the amount of beef available? A little bit, yeah. But that doesn't mean that, oh, you know, beef is somehow bad. And the other thing you hear, too, especially related to beef and meat in general, is that meat somehow causes climate change, which is absolutely absurd. Okay, you know, there are millions of cows in the U.S., yes, but what was here before there were cows? Tens of millions of bison. Basically, in every environment where you're raising cows and other ruminants in a natural context, that's natural grassland. There were other animals there before our domesticated animals were. You're just merely replacing the wild animal with a domesticated version that's producing meat for humans. So now you can debate whether or not that the, uh, is unfair to the wild animal, how much wild versus domesticated animals we should have. Should we have, should we try to rewild large tracts of land? And that's fine, but you can't say that it's inherently causing environmental damage because a cow is just replacing the ecological niche of a bison in a grassland if it's done appropriately. For a great example of this, I would check out Alan Savory at the Savory Institute. He talks about how rotational grazing is not only a positive, not, not bad for the land, it's a positive thing, it's necessary. So moving and grazing animals over grassland does not only not degrade the land, it's absolutely essential for that land's vitality. You know, that's a huge myth that's been promoted is that, you know, overgrazing somehow causes desertification. And sure, overgrazing, keeping the animals in the same patch of land for months until they graze it completely down is bad. But if you're mirroring the natural ways in which our ancestors would have, you know, moved these animals along and they would have done it in nature, there's no negative effects whatsoever. The real cause of negative effects is tilling, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. And the reality is it's impossible to get the quality of calories from meats that meat provides without using grain. Grain is entirely necessary. Uh, in order to grow grain, it's entirely necessary to till, which is the most damaging thing you can do to the soil. If you look at the Fertile Crescent thousands of years ago, it was literally a fertile land. And after thousands of years of intense tilling and agriculture, it's now basically a barren desert. And that's the future of tilling agriculture. So it's, it would actually be better if we eliminated more grain from our diet, regrew the prairies, and raised meat there instead. And if we look at any domesticated animal, there's a niche that they fill that is incredibly sustainable. So if we look at composting, it's all well and dandy to put your food scraps in a compost pile. And what, how is that food scraps being broken down? They're being broken down by microbes and vertebrates and fungi. That's fine, now you've got fertile products, but wouldn't it make more sense to feed those scraps to a pig, which then converts them into meat, and then you use their manure as the fertilizer. You're getting more out of it. Ditto for chickens. With meat rabbits, it's the same thing we're doing with ruminants, just on a smaller scale. We're taking grass and plant material that's basically useless to humans and converting it into a high-quality food. 
it is there's no productive ecosystem on this earth that does not have animals evolved in it so if you're trying to mimic a natural system say through permaculture or some kind of sustainable agricultural model you're not being natural if you're not integrating animals into it they provide so many services too much to get into in this video but this is a topic that i really recommend anybody who is involved in producing meat either for themselves or as a farmer really educates themselves on because basically these groups of people have are very skilled at manipulating and distributing information they're obviously not large nonprofits with a lot of money like PETA that you know spread this kind of crap but then you also have um, a lot of people who don't necessarily want to be hostile to meat but are just so disconnected from it that they don't even think about it you know most people today live in urban areas most scientists who run studies live in urban areas and farmers are growing more and more reclusive as they're a smaller part of the population and are under more attack from various angles. So the, the other side doesn't really get explained there and you know the sort of the ground has been seeded to these these people who basically expect us to ignore nature, history, and basic common sense. You know, this is something that we could go into a lot more, but it's something that we need to, you know, make very clear that it's absolutely false that meat is somehow bad for the environment, bad for people, or bad for animals. It's absolutely false. There's plenty of data to back that up. It's just not talked about. And it's even more important that we say, yes, industrial agriculture has many bad consequences. There are some advantages about the fact that the population as, in a, as a whole can afford a lot of cheap meat. That's something that is really positive development for a lot of people but it's also has these negative externalities and we can address that but industrial agriculture these animals were not domesticated when industrial agriculture was a thing they were designed domesticated bred and designed and I say designed because we breeders control the genetics of these animals they were designed to complement other agricultural efforts not to be a waste of calories resources and space they can use products that we can't and turn them into something more valuable. And that's truly the magic of meat and meat animals. A pig can turn scraps into quality food. A rabbit or a cow can turn grass into quality food. A sheep can turn grass into clothing. That is the power of domesticated animals. And it is precisely why meat is not only not bad for the environment, it is essential to any form of sustainability to somehow incorporate animals in there to turn your waste products into a more valuable product. Now, I know this isn't our usual rabbit conversation, so I hope I didn't get too preachy on you guys, but it really is important that you have this knowledge so you can defend yourself if you're ever attacked or you hear this kind of stuff. The only way we're ever gonna make any progress is if we really push back on it. Um, otherwise, I will have another video coming out soon. If you like this one, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. If you disagree with me, feel free to leave a comment. I'm gonna link to the resources that support this, but I really recommend you do your research, and if you agree with me, I hope this provided you with useful information in your own life for people you encounter. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Thanks for watching.